Well hello there folks, it's me again. This time it's another way of setting up receivers on a tight budget. And we've just had delivered this very cheap signal generator from China. I took the advantage of the 1111 sale, sale and what is it today? Something like the 26th of November 2018. And it's just arrived today. I think they're normally £67, it was £57 delivered. And for that you get a... A uh, very cheap signal generator that allegedly does 0.5 to 470 megs. These are sold as a walkie-talkie tester. So, I, when I look down AliExpress at things like this, if you look for a mobile radio, what we would call a mobile radio, is something like that, uh, if I can find the zoom button on this camera that I've never used before, something like that Maxcom 20E, which I've just pulled off the shelf. Uh, to do this test with. We call that a mobile radio. We call a hand portable radio, either a walkie-talkie or a hand portable or something like that. And we call a base station a base station or home base. But in China it seems to me that that would be a car walkie-talkie. So you have to kind of get into that mindset and so that is a walkie-talkie tester. So we've got the um, power supply we fixed the other week We've got this dead cheap thing and I have set it up and we'll just try and zoom in on that display and you will see that we've got it as near to channel 20 UK as possible and so we can adjust that frequency. You can toggle through these with the F1 button. So now it's looking at the tone which is being generated we can change that to off 2k 3k for whatever reason and we can go so that's frequency adjust because the arrows against the frequency um, press it again the arrows now against the decibels of attenuation so we can go up and down with that now, when I did my training, and I'm 56, so we're going back some years, everything was in microvolts. So I printed myself off a chart off the internet so that I know what uh, dBm is what in microvolts. So at the moment, 113 dBm is 0.5 of a microvolt. So that, that's, that's fine. So if we want to simulate S9, I'll, it should be, in my mind, 100 microvolts. So, if I've printed off the right bit, we at minus 66. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. I'd have to play with this into a, shall we say, a proper test set in inverted commas to, to be able to trust the calibration. But um, I'll just, we're at 60, minus 70 is the strongest signal it puts out. So to my, looking at the chart, that would be, what? Ooh, about 70 microvolts, so not quite enough to calibrate S9. Well, not in my mind anyway. There are some people calibrate S9 to 50 microvolts and some even to 10 microvolts. So let's pop the camera down on the radio and if we can see what that meter says, it actually says about, um, ooh, it says about S7. So that's about where you'd expect it to be. So that's uh, what the strongest signal is it puts out, minus 70 dBm. So what we're going to do, at least with an FM signal generator, we can set the detector, and I'll just set up the um, uh, FET voltmeter across the speaker terminals when we get there, and then we can set the detector, which on Maxcom 
of the 20 E's can go out very easily. It's uh, one of the worst radius for drift in that direction. And I'll just whip the lids off. In fact, I'll whip the lids through the dishwasher because that radio is absolutely filthy. And I will see you in a moment. We'll just put this to standby. Okay, and uh, what we've done now is we've had the case and the knobs go through the company dishwasher. We've set up the cyanide meter and I've got it on the millivolt AC volts range so we can start by doing the detector. And so this isn't a, a video on how to service the Maxcom 20E, this is on using cheap instruments on a tight budget. So if you remember, if you looked at the previous video, we bought that for uh, 90 about ninety pounds from the from Canada using eBay, plus plenty of postage, and that's plugged into our one hundred and twenty volt transformer under the bench. Uh, we've got it connected to this um, dead cheap little signal generator, which is FM, one kilohertz tone. It's max. We've got the signal generator at minus seventy dBm, which is 70 microvolts, which as I've said before, I don't deem to be S9, but we're going to set the detector, so we're looking for maximum recovered audio, this will be even better with an oscilloscope, um, because you could see it peak and not distort. Um, we've got our little dead cheap 22 pound one there, which we could have plugged in, but we borrowed the power supply off it for, the, um, for that meter. So I'm going to adjust the detector and we're looking for the maximum AC volts recovered. So you see it drops there and it peaks there so we'll just back up on that and there we are. It's definitely set as the detector. So we'll now flick this over to Cyanide and we'll turn down the signal generator. So it's at the moment it's on uh, minus 70 db so what we're going to do is turn it right to the other end till we start to lose the signal it's starting to get scratchy so that's 112 decibels which according to my lookup table here for those of you that's 0.56 of a microvolt now especially detune this receiver so we're using the sign meter like we did the other day. So we now back the signal generator off. 117 decibel. I think that's the peak. Just back it off a little bit more. Okay, so we're hearing that at minus 119, so we're looking at 0.28 of a microvolt we're listening to there. Now having a cyanide meter we can use the scale here because they often quote a specification to a, a radio in um, so many decibel cyanide. So what we're going to do is we'll knock the signal generator up till we get to minus 10 which is, office, uh, which is often the one quoted. So that's about minus 10, 11, something like that. So it's doing minus 117 dB for 10 decibel cyanide. So what's that? That's 0 0.315 of a microvolt. So let's go for 12 decibel cyanide. We'll knock it up another notch. And that's about there. So it's minus 116 so we're looking at 0.354 microvolts sensitivity for 12 decibel cyanide and that is an excellent result 
So I start off and I'm enthusiastic about uh, instruments and the whole idea about doing these uh, this set of videos on uh, doing CB radio tuning on a budget. Yeah, we can all, subject to finance, going out to buy £12,000 pieces of test equipment which are all singing or dancing and you know they're going to work in the calibrator. But to try and do th these things on a budget is another kettle of fish altogether. So here we have this brand new cheap Chinese instrument I got off AliExpress for 50 I think it was £56 delivered. The second hand sign out, which only had to clean the switches on, £90 from eBay from a chap in Canada. The dead cheap £10 power supply. And I know this isn't as cheap as using the Boat Anchor, a Boat Anchor AM signal generator, but it's a lot more convenient because you're not having to mess about generate an, an FM tone with a CB walkie-talkie in order to set the detector. It's all on there. So I think that's very impressive. So I'll put the radio back together and we'll see whether it still works. Right, well there's still a mark having put the case back together on there. I'll let Mr Chippy go through that when he comes at the weekend with his motorised oversized scrubbing brush thing which he got from Lidl. Uh, I'm sure he'll enjoy doing that. But the front panel's come up a tree. I notice this is the late version, I've not seen this before. I don't know what GWL stands for. Something something limited, I don't know. But this is 1985 manufacturer, I've just looked at the back. So I've not seen one as late as that before. And I had to unbend the shaft on the volume control. I think it's been dropped. But luckily I managed not to snap it off. So there we are. So we've used a Sonad meter. We've used the dead cheap little signal generator. Sold by, um, I got that one from Amazon uh, Express. Not Amazon. AliExpress. Uh, direct from China. Um, and it was sold as a... FM walkie talkie tester and um, I've never seen one of those mics before but I'm sure it'll be coming off and being replaced so there you have it another on the budget method of doing CB receive and this time we've actually been able to use a cheap signal generator which is calibrated to some extent so that's been uh, so I'm quite impressed with that and uh, I'm not normally impressed with anything so we'll just uh, leave it at that and I think we're back to vintage audio to be honest next. So thank you for watching.